also to not use supplements for cancer prevention themselves. Um, and what this really means is that it should be a goal to try to meet your nutrition needs through food itself. Now, there, I, I'm a dietitian. Food first is always a belief of mine. However, I do think that there are times and places where supplements can be very appropriate and in some cases necessary. Um, I personally am a believer of understanding like where our levels are before we supplement, because there might be some cases where we don't need to supplement um, because we're already meeting our needs. And it's quite amazing how individualized this can be. So for example, I regularly have my vitamin D tested, which has been, has some links to um, cancer, specifically breast cancer and colorectal cancer, that if there's deficient amounts, we have increased risk for those types of cancer. Um, to me, it's really important to know where my level lies and adjust any supplementation accordingly. As I mentioned before, I have a twin sister. We are pretty confident we're identical, but we do need to verify that. But I, we live very similar lives. We're outside a very similar amount, et cetera. And I constantly need to have higher supplementation than she does. And so it doesn't necessarily always have to do with where you live or how your body translates the, um, you know, the sunshine into active vitamin D in your body. It can have something to do with how, how are your kidneys able to do that? It can vary from person to person. So I think it's really important to make sure that we are um, seeing where our levels are before we supplement. And also there are some supplements out there, for example, that can actually have been shown to increase cancer progression. So for example, high amounts of vitamin E in lung cancer patients receiving radiation has been shown that the high vitamin E levels, which operates as an antioxidant. So it seems like it can be a really good thing has actually been shown to increase the risk of progression of cancer. So I think it's really important that if you're considering supplementation in your diet to work with a qualified healthcare professional to assess what are your individual needs. Your individual needs are not the same as the person next to you in the same in the case that my individual needs are not necessarily the same as my twin sister. So I really want to make hit that uh, message home because it can vary so much from individual to individual. Um, and also the recommendation for uh, mothers to breastfeed your baby if possible. Now, there are some cases where it's just not possible for a mother to be able to do that. Um, there are situations where a mother can try incredibly hard to make breastfeeding work for them and their milk supply doesn't come in or it's not providing adequate amounts for that baby's growth. There are circumstances where it's not possible. Um, and also we kind of live in a society where it doesn't make breastfeeding, um, there it's not conducive to breastfeeding, right? Keep, I, I breastfed both of my children and sometimes you get looks depending on where you are and so forth. And we really need to create environments where this is the norm and acceptable and, um, allows women to breastfeed their baby better because it's good for, um, reduction of cancer risk for both the mom and the baby. And then also the last recommendation is after a cancer diagnosis, follow the recommendations if you can and check with your healthcare professional of what's right for you. And this really goes back a lot to when I talked about the recommendations of working with an oncology dietitian during the course of treatment, some of these recommendations might change um, because we need to focus on the there and now to get them through that so that they're adequately nourished. And sometimes our recommendations can change. So that's really where it talks about um, checking with your healthcare professional if it's right for you. Um, if I have patients that aren't having side effects or really minimal side effects, um, of course, I'm going to promote these recommendations for them because this, excuse me, the sooner you start, the better. Um, so I just wanted to show this one, one more time to see how those cancer recommendations really fit into um, where these all play. One thing that we didn't talk about that I really do enjoy talking about um, is phytonutrients and phytonutrients are one of my favorite things to talk about because they're so incredible and they're not talked about enough. And these, um, you can might've heard of them be called phytochemicals as well. Um, and phytonutrients is another way that I, uh, another term that you might hear. And these are disease fighting nutrients. And they've been, they only are found in plants because phyto is the root word for plant. Um, so they're plant nutrients and they're considered natural chemicals and they're beneficial to human health. And there has been many studies demonstrating anti-cancer effects in laboratory studies, and they're known to interfere with a number of cellular processes involved in the progression of cancer. So phytonutrients are an incredible thing. And the more that we can get them through our food, the better. Um, and the things that actually have phytonutrients really, truly any whole fruit, vegetable, whole grain, legume, nut, or seed has phytonutrients in it. 
Some foods are gonna have more nutrients than others, such as this beautiful bowl of blueberries. They contain, they contain a phytonutrient called anthocyanins that makes these blueberries this really beautiful, deep blue color, okay? And then also even the cauliflower, even though the cauliflower is white, it actually has phytonutrients that make it white. Generally speaking, it, the more color it has, the more phytonutrient it has. But in the case of like cauliflower, for example, that might be misleading because it's white, right? But there are phytonutrients and great ones within the cauliflower and so many other plants. Now, research has shown um, that phytonutrients can help stimulate the immune system, which is something that we want to do. We want to make sure that our immune system is running appropriately and can help identify those bad cells and get rid of things before they become really dangerous. They can help block the substances we eat, drink, and breathe from becoming carcinogens or cancer-causing substances, can help reduce inflammation that makes cancer growth more likely. And here's a huge one, prevent DNA damage, which we know now that we've had this presentation that we wanna to try to avoid at all costs, but it is inevitable in some situations, but also to help with DNA repair, right? We wanna to try to make sure that any DNA that has been damaged, we can try to help repair it right? Damage to our DNA is going to happen every day as long as we live our life, but we want to try to reduce that damage as much as possible and repair it where we can. These phytochemicals have been um, shown to help do that. Also reduce oxidative damage. Um, oxidative damage really results in DNA damage and therefore increasing the risk of cancer. So the growth rate of cancer cells trigger apoptosis, which is what we want to happen, and then also help regulate hormones. Um, you know, if we, I like to say that we all know that hormones rule the world, right? Um, and especially important for women, but also for men, there are um, like prostate cancer, for example, is, has a lot to do with hormones. So we want to try to make sure that our hormones at, are at appropriate levels. If they're too low, that can cause problems. If they're too high, that can cause problems. And um, some diets have it's shown that in some diet research that eating a certain type of dietary pattern coupled with other lifestyle factors can really help regulate the hormones to natural levels. Now, some of my favorite phytochemicals to talk about are sulforaphane, which is primarily found in cruciferous vegetables, such as that broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and cabbage. Um, ferulic acid, which is found in fruits, including whole grains, fruits, and even coffee. And then genistine, which is best known in, in sources of soy, such as edamame, tofu, tempeh, and soy milk. And yes, um, genistein or soy products actually are beneficial for reducing the risk of cancer specifically, and definitely including hormone positive ca breast cancers and even um, hormone related cancers in men like prostate cancer. So um, soy is a common topic when it comes to nutrition and cancer that it should be avoided, but research actually shows that um, breast cancer survivors who consume the most amount of soy compared to the least amount of soy and other survivors actually have a 25% risk reduction in cancer recurrence. And that goes for um, the individuals that have had estrogen receptor positive cancer. And also we see some really positive benefits in triple negative breast cancer, which is meaning that it has no um, hormone or HER2 component to it. And it is a harder to treat, more aggressive type of cancer. So it's really powerful that we've seen some research in like foods like this, even though most of the research is in um, hormone related cancers, we actually see really great benefits in triple negative as well. Um, curcumin, which is a powerful anti-inflammatory, um, which is found in many traditional Indian dishes, which is a component of turmeric. Um, many people have probably heard or used turmeric before. And then quercetin, which is found in a variety of foods, but especially in citrus fruits, apples, onions, and parsley. And then in dull three carbonyl, which is found primarily in broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, flour. And I wrote in parentheses, the power of cruciferous veggies, because you can see the indole three carbonyl here and also the sulforaphane. And so what's really important to point out about these phytochemicals is like, yes, these are individual nutrients that have been shown to help reduce the risk of cancer and fight cancer. However, it's not just these, this one nutrient that is playing a role. Researchers believe that it might be this nutrient playing and interacting with incredible amounts of other types of nutrients that is playing a role in helping to reduce the risk of cancer and its development. Mm -hmm.